record uh, will reflect again that we're in session on State of Wisconsin versus Kale Fleischauer. The appearances are as noted. Ms. Leary, I appreciate the sweatshirt given the Badger win last night. So, for those of us that are Badger fans, uh, it was a great game. With that said, uh, Mr. Kaiser, your next witness, please. State calls Jim Mickla. Investigator, if you'll raise your right hand, please. Thank you. Take the stand, please. Mr. Kaiser. Thank you, Judge. Good morning. Would you state your name, spell your first and last name for the record, and please speak up so everyone can hear you. Jim Mikla, J-I-M-M-I-K-L-A. Mr. Mikla, where do you work? I work for the St. Croix County Sheriff's Office. What's your job there? I am an investigator. How long have you uh, been a police officer altogether? Approximately 30 years. <clears throat> Where'd you start your work as a police officer? I started with the St. Croix County Sheriff's Office. What was your job when you first started? I was a part-time deputy. How long were you a deputy before you became an investigator? Approximately 10 years. And uh, so therefore, how long have you been an investigator? Approximately 13. Are you familiar with uh, St. Croix and its environments? Yes, I am. How is that? Um, familiar with the territory, the area. Uh, I grew up in St. Croix County, so I am aware. What sport did you participate in in high school? Jackson, Lays a foundation for later testimony. Subject to tie up, you can answer. Football, wrestling, track. You've had a uh, opportunity uh, that we'll get to, but just to tie it up right now for the court, um, you had an opportunity to be uh, present at the autopsy, is that correct? Yes. You saw the injuries on uh, Chase Fleischauer that we had an opportunity to see yesterday in pictures, is that right? Yes. Based on your experience in wrestling, were any of those injuries consistent with wrestling? No. Detective, could you describe, <laughs> investigator, could you describe for us what, um, based on your experiences in both realms, uh, what the difference is between your work as an investigator and the work of a patrol officer? Uh, patrol officers, first response, they're, they're the first responders. Uh, where they arrive at the scene, uh, assess that scene, and make certain determinations. Uh, after those determinations, uh, a supervisor is contacted uh, to determine if an investigator should respond to that scene. Once the patrol officer is no longer needed at the scene and the investigator is assigned, uh, what, if any, other role does the patrol officer have in terms of the ongoing investigation? It, it kind of depends, but uh, scene security would be one of them, or to provide any assistance that we, we may need as investigators. Detective, I think the base of the microphone could move the entire microphone system over to your right. Is that fair to say? Or is that as far as it goes? It, it will move, yes. All right, so I'm just thinking, as you turn your head to look towards the jury, if you could move the whole microphone system a little to the right, the microphone would stay in front of your face. Thank you very much. Um, <clears throat> during your time as a um, patrol officer, can you estimate for us approximately how many death scenes you responded to that didn't involve motor vehicles? An estimated would be 20, 15 to 20 at least. As an investigator, what, if any kind of specialized training have you intended, attended regarding um, death scene investigations? I have attended uh, two different courses, or act, I'm sorry, three, three different trainings. 
Uh, one was a two-week uh, homicide uh, course put on by the Department of Criminal Investigations, uh, which is part of the Department of Justice. I was also to a one-week school um, pertaining to death investigation as well. Um, I also had officer-involved death training uh, through the Department of Justice or the Division of Criminal Investigations. What, if any, organization do you belong to regarding death investigations? Uh, I currently am a member of the Wisconsin Association for Homicide Investigators, uh, which is uh, an association that is put on by the Department of Justice um, and the Division of Criminal Investigations. Um, and I attend trainings yearly with the Wisconsin Association of Homicide Investigators. When you attend those conferences, um, what subjects are uh, generally covered, since it's a homicide investigator conference, what subjects are generally covered by the presenters at those annual conferences? Um, any, uh, a lot of presentations involving certain uh, death investigations, uh, case, case scenarios, uh, suicides, uh, gun involved incidents, knife involved situations, arsons, um, a variety of different circumstances due to uh, homicide or death investigations. Is your work in death scene investigations limited only to St. Croix County? No, it is not. How is that? Um, I also have conducted uh, and assisted, assisted investigations in various counties uh, surrounding St. Croix County where we were mutilated to assist with certain death investigations. You said that's called mutual aid? I couldn't hear you. C correct. I'm sorry. Yep. Thank you. When you've been to uh, training regarding uh, homicide and death investigations, um, what uh, is the nature of the qualifications of the people who provide that training? They are specialized or have uh, done uh, in-depth investigations uh, concerning uh, homicides or death investigations. Do uh, some of, is some of that training provided by um, forensic pathologists? Yes. Some of that training provided by other investigators? Yes. What other uh, units of your department have you belonged to in your time there? The, the corrections department I originally started, uh, patrol deputy. I was a SWAT operator and team leader. Uh, I was on the SWAT team for approximately 14 years and a team leader for approximately eight of those 14 years. Uh, Six years assigned to uh, the St. Croix Valley Drug Task Force. And present time, um, general investigation with the Sheriff's Office. Do you train other investigators? Yes, I've also had previous, uh, not, not, not investigators, no, I'm sorry. The um, participation in the SWAT team um, can you tell us what that acronym stands for? Special, weapon, special Weapons and Tactics, also known as uh, uh, our Emergency Response Unit. As part of that Emergency Response Unit, um, what if anything does uh, familiarity with firearms, what, what if any familiarity with firearms is required as a part of being in that unit? We do monthly shooting with handgun and rifles. What's the um, standard issue firearm for your department that you would be familiar with in that work and in your work as an investigator? Um, I'm currently assigned uh, a nine millimeter handgun. 
What other firearms have you become familiar with based on your work in the SWAT team? Uh, I'm also uh, assigned uh, a rifle as well. What, if any, training have you had in relation to shootings, have you had in relation to police shootings? Uh, I have attended, um, it was either a one or two day training on officer involved shootings or officer involved deaths. In the course of that training, um, how important was understanding what weapons were involved and where they were? It was very important. What training do you do of other officers as part of your long time experience in the, in the department? I was uh, an instructor for emergency vehicle operations and I was also uh, an instructor for PIT, which is a tactic where we, during a pursuit, we would, uh, or some type of incident where we would take a vehicle off the road. How, if in any way, as you help train other officers, do you do your best to try to give them the experience of dealing with certain situations? This, Subject to tie up, Mr. Kaiser, but let's keep it moving. Could you ask the question one more time, please? How, how if in any way, uh, do you help prepare officers for types of situations that they might encounter? Through, through training and through uh, personal experience uh, on incidents that I have been involved in, what, if anything, do you set up for them to try to give them that experience? So it would objection, Your Honor. Overruled. You can answer. It's a matter of weight. Training. What, if any, uh, training scenario or simulations have you ever set up involving firearms at a scene? I don't recall any right off the top of my head. Okay. Based on your training and experience, um, what, if any, training do you provide to other officers regarding where they might expect to find a firearm, uh, depending on whether it's a homicide, a suicide, or an accident? In, in my experience, um, uh, on suicides, uh, the weapon would be near uh, the deceased. Even a pistol, not a rifle? Correct. How did you first become involved in the um, investigation of the death of Chase Fleischauer? I was contacted by uh, my captain about the situation. When was that? It was in the early morning hours of April 14. That was a Saturday? Uh, of 2018, correct. I'm you sorry. were at home? Yes. Who called you? Uh, captain Klatt. What did he ask you to do? He advised me of a situation that our patrol deputies uh, were on and asked that I respond along with uh, investigator Demling. Were you an investigator Demling of the same, uh, I guess, rank is the best way to put it in the military sense? Yes. 
if I'm wrong, correct me, but would it be fair to say you had equal responsibility for managing to deal with this situation? Yes. Right. Where did you go then after you got called at home on the early morning hours of Saturday, April 14th, 2018? I responded to the address of 1489 142nd Street in the town of Richmond. Here in St. Croix County? Yes. What vehicle did you use to get there? I have an unmarked police SUV. What was the weather as you were heading there? Snowy, blowing. What area of St. Croix County were you coming from? I was coming from the southeastern portion of our county. Do you remember about how long it took you to get there? Estimate was a half hour, 45 minutes. So about what time did you get to 1489 142nd Street? It was between 6, 6 a.m. and 6.30. Who was there? Uh, there were several deputies. Uh, there was EMS. What deputies were there? Deputy Coleman, Deputy Prashak, Deputy Durand, what so, other law enforcement was there? Also an officer from the city of New Richmond. Who was who? Uh, Sergeant Sather. You said that the EMS ambulance was there? Yes. When you got there, where were the emergency medical technician and the paramedic? They were in the ambulance. With who? Summer. Was there anyone else with them with Summer? I believe that there was a, a chaplain. With? Yep. Thank you. If I'm wrong, correct me. Is that a person named Kevin Morris? Yes. While you were there at the scene, did you come to see a person that you later learned his name was Kale Fleischauer? Yes. When you got there, where was the person that came, you came to know to be Kale Fleischauer? He was in the back of one of our patrol vehicles. With what officer, if you recall? I recall it being uh, uh, Deputy Prashak. The person you saw in that squad car that day, do you see him here in court today? We'll yeah. We'll stipulate, Your Honor, that Joe Fleischauer is who we saw. Thank you. Identification is agreed. Which of, the, which of the law enforcement officers on scene did you first talk to? It would have been uh, Sergeant Coleman. Where were you when you spoke with him? At the end of the driveway at that residence. What, if any, circumstances did he describe to you that would have warranted your uh, participation in this investigation? Object to that as hearsay. Sustained. Without saying what he said, did Sergeant Coleman describe to you what his investigation had been up to that point? Yes. Who, if anyone, arrived while you were talking to Sergeant Coleman? Investigator Demling. At or around or shortly after Investigator uh, Sean Demling arrived. Um, what, if any, uh, government official came to the scene? That would have been uh, the St. Croix County Medical Examiner. 
Who's that? Uh, Patty Shotner. Can you spell the last name for us? Well, I'll give it a try. It's S C H A N T T N E R. What's her responsibility at the scene? She is the, the medical examiner and is technically in charge of the body. Where did you, Investigator Demling, and the medical examiner go then? We proceeded uh, into the residence. Who else went in with you? Uh, Sergeant Coleman. Without saying what he said, would it be fair to say that Sergeant Coleman pointed out to you various things while you were in the residence? Yes. What if any, uh, while Sergeant Coleman was with you pointing out various things in the residence, what if anything was the medical examiner doing? She was present with us as well. Besides being present, what if any other physical or investigative activity was she engaged in? She uh, looked around the scene and also took some photographs. About what time was this? I would say approximately 6.30. Yes, it is a picture that was taken by uh, M.E. Shotner. Does it truly and accurately depict the scene on the upper level of um, 1489 142nd Street uh, while you were taking the walkthrough that you've described? Yes. Move Exhibit 178 into evidence asked to publish. No objection. Received, granted. Investigator, um, could you tell us if we look down the hallway in Exhibit 178, um, what's on the floor in the middle of the hallway on the carpeting? It is a piece of paper. During the walkthrough, did you eventually have an, an opportunity to observe what was on that piece of paper? Yes, I did. What was it? It uh, was a piece of paper that had a drawing of a pistol on it. In this photograph, is it in the same place where you saw it when you were there when this photograph was taken? Yes. Right. Then um, do you recognize that there's a partially open door, a little bit ajar on the left side of our end of the hallway? Yes. What's on the floor in front of that? It is a piece of paper. And that shows where that piece of paper was when you were there at about 6.30 in the morning, is that right? Yes. Showing you what's been marked as Exhibit 179 for identification. Could you tell us if you recognize what that's a photograph of, please? Yes. That is also a picture that was taken that morning. Is it truly and accurately um, depict uh, a close-up of the scene we just described in 178? Yes. Move 179 as to publish. No objection. 
Received, granted. Does that uh, uh, piece of paper remain on the carpeting in the hallway? Yes. And uh, the piece of paper is sort of in the door that's ajar? Yes. And again, this truly and accurately depicts the scene as you saw it at about 6.30 in the morning? Yes. Thank you. What, if anything, did you observe about uh, Chase Fleischauer? He uh, was laying on his back in uh, the dining room area of that residence uh, with blood all around him. What, if any, injury did you observe when you were there? I observed what I believe to be a, a, a gunshot wound to the left side of his forehead. What, if anything, was at or around his feet? There was a stool, and his legs were entangled in that stool. Was there any firearm in his vicinity? No. Did you, um, in your walk around, move into the living room area? Yes. In the living room area, what, if anything, did you see on the carpeting? In, in the living room, I observed an unspent shell casing. In what would be the vicinity of a dining area, um, what, if anything, did you notice in that area? There, there was blood, a lot of blood. Um, I also observed a, a table in that dining room area that was against the wall where people wouldn't be able to sit all the way around it. The blood that you observed, um, was it outside the vicinity of Chase Fleischauer's body? Yes, there was some, yes. Was there any in the vicinity of the table itself, the, like the dining room table, not the island? There, there was some in the area of that dining room table, yes. What if any, um, what if anything did you notice up against the wall between the dining room table and the sliding glass door to go out to the deck? There were a series of uh, what I would call dog dishes, and there was uh, like busted plant material off in one of those dishes. Having noticed that there were dog dishes there, um, what, if anything, were you alert to then that might have appeared in the blood? Uh, some type of dog prints. Did you see any? I did not. <laughs> in the kitchen area, did you have, uh, what, if anything, um, did you notice regarding the refrigerator? I noticed that there was a, a, a BB gun on top of that refrigerator. What was it kind of between? It was between um, some egg cartons. Did you see any blood on the floor in front of the refrigerator? No. What, if any, firearm did you see during this initial walkthrough in the house? I did not see any other firearm. Or, uh, correction, there was a firearm on the counter, I'm sorry. What counter? Can you describe this counter? It course? would be an island counter um, across from the refrigerator. What was the state of that pistol when you saw it? It, it was laying 
on the island counter and the magazine clip had been taken out of it and the action of that firearm was open um, and I could tell that it had been cleared and secured and the round that was in the chamber was sitting uh, next to that firearm. After the survey of the that portion of the upper level that you just described, where did uh, you go during this initial walkthrough? I then proceeded down the hallway to the north of that residence. While you were walking down the hallway, um, can you tell us whether or not you saw Exhibit 23? Yes, I did. And what is Exhibit 23? It is uh, a drawing um, of a handgun on a piece of, uh, I guess, three by five uh, paper. Without saying what was said by anyone, was that object being where it was of importance to your investigation? Yes. And even though Ms. Schachner, for medical examiner purposes, had taken pictures that day. What did you expect else would happen in regards to that piece of paper, Exhibit 23, being on the carpeting in the furtherance of your investigation? Uh, that, that would be processed later. Did you, what, if anything, did you expect whether or not it would be additionally photographed? Jack, to your honor, is uh, Sustained as to the form of the question is his expectations. <clears throat> How long did you say you've been an investigator? Uh, approximately 13 years. In total, not just St. Croix County, but all your experience, how many death scenes have you been to? Jack, this is repetitious. Trying to show why he had the expectation. Sustained. Do we approach? Yes. When you say you expected that Exhibit 23 would be processed, could you tell us what the various things are in police business that are involved in processing the scene? That it would have been measured uh, from the distance to the body, that it be photographed uh, again, and seized as evidence. As you went further down the hallway, um, what, if anything, did you notice about the doors of the rooms, whether they were open or closed? I recall the northwest bedroom door closed. And for our orientation, as we're going down the hallway, um, are the bedrooms at the, or are the bedroom type rooms, are they at the end of the hallway? Yes, they are. All right. So when you say northwest, if I'm walking down the hallway, is that the room on the left or on the right? It would be the room on the left. We'll get to that. The room on the right, what, if anything, did you notice about the door of that room, if you remember? I believe it was open. As to the room on the left where the door was closed uh, during this walkthrough at about 6.30 or continuing after that time, um, what, if anything, did you do with that door? Uh, I opened that door. What, if anything, did you notice, first of all, was in the room? I noticed there were some dogs in that room. Do you remember how many? Two. What were they doing when you opened the door? They were standing on the back side of that door. What did you do in terms of looking around the room? I took a quick glance in the room, noticed it, it was a bedroom, and uh, then I, I backed out. I didn't make any other observations. What did you do with the door? I closed it. In the room across the hall where the uh, door was open, uh, did you notice whether or not there was a, a dog bed there? Yes. 
once you had um, you, the medical examiner, uh, investigator Demling, uh, and Sergeant Coleman uh, had walked through uh, and observed the things you've described for us, um, what, if anything, did you all do? Uh, we then uh, backed out of the residence and secured the residence for search warrant purposes. So once all of you were gone from the residence, who, if anyone, was left inside? The only person inside that residence was Chase. How, if in any way, was the um, residence secured, as you said? It was uh, secured by assigning um, an investigator uh, outside the door of that residence. An investigator, like you and Mr. Demling? Yes. And um, once the residence is secured, um, what, if anything, uh, would an officer assigned to keep security on the residence be required to do? Maintain that nobody goes in or around that residence. If um, officials, police, the medical examiner, were to uh, come to the residence to perform their duties, what would the officer who's required to maintain security of the residence do in terms of those people and keeping track of them? There is a crime, league, crime scene log established, and they would be listed on that crime scene log. Based on your investigation and survey of the scene, um, what, if any, additional resources uh, did you all determine would need to be called in? We requested the assistance of the Wisconsin State Crime Lab. What particular aspect of the crime lab? Uh, the evidence processing unit. Had you left the dogs in the room? Yes. Per protocol, who would have had to have made the contact with the crime lab to get the crime scene unit there? That would have been uh, through a supervisor. And who was the supervisor that day? Uh, Kathy Borgschatz, Chief Deputy Borgschatz. Can you spell the last name for us? B-O-R-G-S-C-H-A-T-Z. Just so the record's clear, probably everybody knows, about how long is it from Madison to here, to, to this vicinity? Uh, three and a half, four hours. <coughs> Once you got the ball rolling on that aspect of it, where did you go then? I then uh, went to our office. Before you did that, who, if anyone else, was still outside the residence, if you recall? Uh, Summer Fleshhauser, Johnson Fleshhauser. Where was she? Um, initial contact was she was in the ambulance. What was her emotional state? Uh, what, let me ask you a question. Sorry, my fault. What did you do in relation to Summer being in the ambulance? What did you do? Uh, I proceeded into the ambulance and introduced myself. How was she? Hysterical, crying, uh, very emotional. Without saying what was said, did you talk to her? Yes. What, if anything, did you ask her if she would do? If um, she, I asked for permission to uh, go to the office with me. What did she say? Yes, she would do whatever she needed to do. <clears throat> what did you do then in order to uh, bring her down here to the Sheriff's Department? Um, I actually gave her a ride to the Sheriff's Office in my uh, unmarked police SUV vehicle.
At some point, what, if anything, did you ask her permission to do with her? Uh, permission to photograph, uh, obtain her clothes, and swabs of her hands. What was your investigative purpose in asking her permission to do those things? Uh, consent. Did you get her consent? Yes. Um, what was your purpose in obtaining uh, those uh, things from her? Uh, we were gathering that as far as investigative purposes. Would you need that information to rule her out as a suspect? Yes. You had mentioned earlier um, that uh, you had made a determination to get a search warrant so that the home could be uh, searched and processed in addition by the crime lab. Um, what if any other search warrant was decided would be obtained? Uh, a search warrant was also drafted for the person of Kale Fleshhauer. And if you know, where was he to be brought to so that that search warrant eventually could be executed on him? He had been brought to uh, the St. Croix County uh, Sheriff's Office. So going back to summer, while you were driving her back here to the Sheriff's Office, what was the weather conditions like at that time? Snowing, blowing, and very slippery. And what was her emotional state? Very emotional, crying. Where did you bring her to? Uh, I brought her to the sheriff's office. Which, um, in relation to the building we're in, where is that? It is in the downstairs uh, portion of this building. So where did you bring her into? Um, I brought her um, to uh, uh, outside of a bathroom in the sheriff's office. Is that off the front lobby? Yes. Who, if anyone, did you call to help you with this? I had contacted uh, Deputy Juar to assist. Is that Dana Juar that testified yesterday? Yes. What did you ask Deputy Juar to do for you? I asked her to take photographs, uh, document any marks, and obtain her clothing. One Where did they go to do that? It was in a bathroom uh, in the front lobby of the sheriff's office. What did you do while they were there? I stood outside the door while that was taking place. When Deputy Dwar was done um, uh, with the uh, things you'd asked her to do, um, where did she come to? Uh, she met me out in the front lobby. What, if anything, did she give you? Uh, she provided me the clothes, and uh, I had also, uh, and the pictures. Besides the clothes and the pictures, um, what, if anything else, did Deputy Dwar take from Summer Johnson fly shower that she had consented to give you guys. Yep. All I recall is the clothes and the pictures. 
Do you remember whether or not she had taken any swabs of Ms. Summer Fleischauer? She did not. <coughs> what was uh, Investigator Demling doing while you were engaged in this process? He was preparing uh, the search warrants. And based on your experience, um, what was, um, based on your experience, what is the process that you go through? And I'm just trying to establish a time frame here. What is the process that has to be gone through to get a search warrant? We have to provide the proper information. It, we are in contact with uh, a prosecutor. And then after it's be reviewed by a prosecutor, we have to take it to uh, make arrangements to uh, uh, get it uh, to a judge for review. So again, in terms of a time frame, that takes a while. Yes, it does. So once you had uh, Summer Johnson Fleischauer's uh, clothing and the photographs, um, what, if anything, did you do with her, with her consent, uh, to secure any additional evidence from her? I then swabbed. Uh, both of her hands with swabs. After you secured that evidence, where did you take Ms. Johnson Fleischauer to? I then um, uh, transported her, uh, took her to her mother's residence in St. Paul. Do you remember about what time you got back to here at the Sheriff's Department? I would, I would say approximately 10 30 ish, 10 30, 11. Who'd you meet with when you got back? I made contact with investigator Demling. When you spoke to him at around 11 o'clock or so, um, was he still working on the search warrants? Yes. Eventually, what did he give to you? Eventually, I received a search warrant for Kale Fleshhauser's person. If you know, what search warrant did uh, Investigator Demling take and where did he go with it? It was for the residents of 1489 142nd Street, and he proceeded to the uh, Richmond Police Department with that. Where'd you go with the search warrant for Cal Fleischauer? I then uh, proceeded to, uh, to where he had been taken to and uh, eventually ended up uh, serving that warrant. What was the warrant for? Yeah, Actually, well, strike <coughs> I apologize. Sorry. Um, in the process of uh, dealing with uh, Cal Fleischauer, um, were you able to, at some point, ascertain how tall he was? Yes. How tall? 5'7". Uh, what, if any, of his uh, property did you get from him? I ended up taking some uh, pajama pants, underwear, socks, along with a forensic kit as well. You were present when the contents of the forensic kit were secured? Yes. How did the, how did Scale Fleischauer's uh, socks, sweatpants, tight pajamas, and underwear get removed from his body? Uh, by his hands. And once you had them, what, if anything, did you give him to wear? Uh, we provided him uh, a uniform. How was that uniform put on him? Uh, by his hands.
this is all happening during the day of April 14th of 2018, is that correct? Yes. Do you remember about what time? Approximately 1.30. Tell me what's been marked as Exhibit 167 for identification. Can you tell us whether or not you recognize uh, the video that would be contained on that exhibit? Yes, I do. And what is that a video of? It is a video of the exam. At least a portion of it. A portion. Yeah. Move Exhibit 167, asked to publish. Yes. No objection. Received. Granted. Thank you. Asked to publish. Oh, yes. You did. Right. Thank you. So this is a split screen uh, investigator. Could you tell us uh, what we're seeing in the split screen? We're seeing, I'm sorry, we're seeing an interview room. Uh, there is a forensic nurse seated at the table. Uh, I am directly to the right of that nurse. With the baseball cap on? Yes. Who's, in standing, in front of the, who's standing in front of Mr. Fleischauer? Investigator Rose. And um, you said earlier that there's a forensic nurse examiner there, is that correct? Yes. Do you remember what her name was? Rachel Sixberry. All right. We're, I'm going to ask Jackie if she would run that for us, and then uh, I'll ask you a couple questions after we watch it, okay? Thanks. Okay. Oh, is the time 145 accurate? Yes. And what's Ms. Sixberry doing here? She is swabbing hands. Of the of Kale Fleischauer. Yes, I'm sorry. So we use this word swab a lot. Can you tell us what a swab is? A swab is basically uh, a Q tip. But a really big one, because we can see e the Yeah, it's a longer um, I would call it a, a, a two-ended uh, Q-tip that we utilize to run over certain surfaces. And then um, what do we see Ms. Sixberry then doing with the Q-tips? Uh, she is placing them into, uh, um, it, it's, a, it's a smaller cardboard box for uh, evidentiary purposes. And then, because you were there and you saw it, uh, you secured that evidence, is that correct? Yes. Thanks, Jay. Thank you. Once you had... Uh, <clears throat> secured the uh, forensic evidence kit and the defendant's uh, Clothing, did you property tag and inventory that clothing uh, for evidentiary purposes in the police department? Yes. Where did you go then? I then proceeded back to uh, my office. And what, if anything, did you have to do when you got back there? And, and physically, uh, and I apologize, my fault. Just give me one second. So the Sheriff's Department is an office here in this building, is that right? Yes. Within the confines of the Sheriff's Department, you have your own office, is that right? Correct. Okay. So when you went back to your own office, what did it turn out you had to do? I ended up uh, making some telephone calls. And why was it you made those telephone calls? Were you making them initiating it, or were you returning the call? I was returning phone calls that I had received. Without saying what was said... Who did you have, who did you return phone calls to that had made phone calls to you? 
Candace Fleshauer. Who is who? Uh, Kale's mother. Who else? And Annette Gonzalez. Who is she? Kale's girlfriend. In terms of um, other evidence uh, taken uh, from the defendant um, at the time the forensic nurse examiner was present, um, what, if anything, did she do in relation to obtaining blood from the defendant? She obtained blood. And was that put into the kit and preserved in your evidentiary methodology? Yes. Right. And um, <clears throat> what, if anything, did the defendant uh, have uh, to eat or drink while he was there? Water. He had some water. And do you recall whether or not that was given to him before or after the blood was drawn? Before. During your time with the defendant uh, during that examination, uh, that was being done, clothing be obtained. Uh, what, if any, injuries did you see on him? I noticed uh, a mark on his back. Anything else? And uh, a swollen hand. Exhibit 163 for identification. Could you tell us what that item is? It is a picture of Kale. It truly and accurately Fleischauer. show how Kale Fleischauer looked. Um, well, where is he in a picture 163? He is in an interview room. Whether in the interview room or in the room where the Samples were taken, as we saw in the video. Is that truly and accurately show how Kale Fleischauer looked uh, in the mid-afternoon of April 14, 2018? Yes. Move Exhibit 163 into evidence. Asked to publish. May I ask a question or two, Your Honor? A question. Directing your attention to 163, do you have a copy? Yes. This was after, was this, I see he still has his pajamas on or sweatpants. Correct. So, was this before putting on the jail clothes? Yes. And you had already taken blood from him? Yes. No objection. Received, published, granted. Thank you. In relation to counsel's question, what is the evidence that the blood had already been drawn by then? Uh, there's a Band-Aid and appears to be a piece of cotton or um, band -Aid, uh, another Band-Aid of some sort on his right arm. In Thank the, you. In a rebel. Got it. Showing you what's been marked as Exhibit 164 for identification. Tell us if you recognize what that's a photograph of, please. Yes, it's uh, a photo of the of Kale's uh, left hand. Does it truly and accurately depict how his left hand looked uh, at the time when he was with you at the St. Croix County Sheriff's Office? Yes. Move and ask to publish 164. No objection. Received, granted. Did you see any injuries on his left hand? No. Uh, sorry, uh, yes, on his left hand. Thank you. And the answer was what, officer? No. Thank I'm sorry. you. Sharing what's been marked as Exhibit 165 for identification, could you tell us what that's a photograph of, please? That would be Kale 
Fleshhauser's left hand. Right hand, I'm sorry. Thank you. Does it truly and accurately depict how his right hand looked when you were with him at the, the St. Croix County Sheriff's Office? Yes. And uh, move exhibit 165, asked to publish. No, yeah. Received, granted. What do we see strewn about the right hand? Uh, blood. And uh, how, if in any way, did you observe this uh, hand to be injured? Uh, it appears to be swollen. <clears throat> Showing it was been marked as exhibit um, 166 for identification. Um, ask you if you can tell us um, what this exhibit is. This is an exhibit of his right and left hand. Recreating the two we just watched together? Yes. Move exhibit 166, ask to publish. No judge. Receive, granted. I'll ask. Do you remember you. about when the pictures were taken of his hands? I honestly don't recall an exact time. What, who was the investigator who took them? Uh, investigator Rose. There was still blood on his hands, is that correct? Yes. Um, was there still blood on his hands at the time that the sexual assault nurse examiner was doing the swabbing that you were present for and saw? Gar, yes. object to that. Will it be stricken from the record? The question. <coughs> May I approach? Yes. <coughs> Investigator counsel has corrected me on I misspoke and I apologize. And I believe you answered it, but let me just do it one more time. Do it correctly. Um, At the time the photograph of Kale Fleischauer's hands were taken, was that at or around the time that the blood was being drawn? Yes. By the time the forensic nurse examiner was swabbing his hands, as you saw in the video, uh, to the best of your recollection, because you were there, was that blood still on his hands? Yes. Thank you, Ryan. After you had these, you returned these phone calls, uh, where did you go then? I then proceeded to the scene of 1489 142nd Street. Who was there? Uh, the Wisconsin Crime Lab, uh, several investigators. W literally, just generally speaking, what were they doing? They were processing the residents. Around what time was that procedure done? What, about what time was all that done at the house? When it was finished or when I could you ask the question again, please? Yeah, I'm I'll sorry. ask it a different way. If you know about what time was 1489 to 142nd Street secured from any people being there. It was in the early morning hours. Uh, I, I believe it was around 503 when that house was originally secured. Originally? Yes. Now at the conclusion of all of the photography, securing of evidence and all that on the 14th or the 15th, I don't know, I'm asking you. About what time was that process done? It, it was on the 14th, and 
the best of my recollection would have been eight, eight, eight thirty. At night. Correct. While the people you've described are coming and going from the house, um, and you may not remember all the names, but uh, who, if anyone, was responsible for making sure who came and went from the house was kept track of? It was the person that was assigned to scene security and the crime scene log. Um, in the normal habit and practice of your department, would that have been uh, a uniform patrol officer? Yes. And the regular habit and practice of your department in terms of shifts, um, would there have been a couple of them? Yes. But at any and all times, as long as uh, that uh, place uh, was secured by your department, there would be someone there to keep track of who came and went or not allow people in if they're not supposed to be there. Is that fair to say? Yes. All right. So around 8.30 or so on the night of, of April 14th, uh, 2018, uh, did the uh, home at 1489 142nd Street uh, continue to be maintained in a secure fashion by law enforcement? Yes. What was yet still left to be done um, in this case uh, that might have required further investigation back at the residence? An autopsy. So that hadn't been done yet on April 14th? No. Where was it to be done? It was to be done at the Ramsey County Medical Examiner's Office in St. Paul. Who makes those arrangements? Uh, the, the county's medical examiner. And that's the medical examiner you walked through earlier in the morning? Yes, her and her assistants. Where, if anywhere, had Chase Fleischauer's body been taken in the meanwhile once it was taken from the scene? After leaving the scene, it was transported to uh, Westfield's Hospital in Richmond. By uh, what office? By the medical examiner's office. For what purpose? Uh, for the purpose of determining if uh, the round was still in the deceased. What medical procedure was used to do that? An x-ray. After that was done, where was Mr. Fleischauer's body taken? Then transferred to our, medical, our, our county's medical examiner's office in New Richmond. Why was it kept there? Is irrelevant. Sustained. <clears throat> How, if in any way, was the weather affecting? Uh, where Mr. Chase Fleischauer's body was taken. Object to that as irrelevant. I don't know what the weather is. Overruled, you can answer if you know. We were in a severe uh, snowstorm. When was Chase Fleischauer's body taken to uh, the Ramsey County Medical Examiner's Office? The next day, uh, April 15th. By who? by Jeff Stacken. Who's he? He is one of the assistant medical examiners in St. Croix County. How did you come to know that uh, Chase Fleischauer's body was in Ramsey County? I was contacted by uh, Stacken. Where did you go then? I then proceeded to the Ramsey County medical examiner's office when you got there, where was Chase Fleischauer? He was in an autopsy room at the medical examiner's office. Who was there? Dr. Mills, an assistant, is all I can recall. Where was Chase Fleischauer when you got there? 
he was laying on a on it on his back in the exam room do you recall whether or not when you got there and saw him whether or not he was still in the body bag with the sheet as we saw in the photograph yesterday he was uh, but the, the 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 top part of that bag had been unzipped and um, a sheet had been pulled back. So what, if any, part of his body could you see when you got there? It was uh, exposing the head, head area. Could you see his face? Yes. At the point at which you first saw him, had he, had he been cleaned up at all? No. Without saying what was said, did you have a conversation with Dr. Uh, Mills about uh, what she was observing? Yes. About how long were you there? Hour, hour and a half, and that would be an approximate. I'm showing you what's been marked for identification as exhibits uh, 147 and 155. Can you tell us, uh, as to each of those, if you recall, uh, what those objects are? Yes, um, the jacketing of a of a bullet and uh, fragments um, of a bullet. All right, just for purposes of the record, where where the stickers are, are you able to tell us which one is the fragments and which one's the jacketing? Yeah, one one fifty five is the jacket, and I, I believe it's 147, uh, the fragments. Did you recover those uh, at the time of the autopsy with Dr. Mills? Yes, I did. Move exhibits 147 and 155 in evidence. Received. And I'm sorry again, which were those, Mr. Kaiser? 147 and 155. Thank you. Thank you, Judge. bring that evidence back to your office and property tag and secure it? Yes, I did. Investigator Mickler, did there come a time in September of 2018 um, that you joined uh, uh, Dr. Mills for the purpose of uh, testing the uh, range um, at which uh, stippling and um, soot would come from the barrel of the pistol? Yes. Where did you do the, It appears we're kind of going into a new area, so let's take our break right now. Uh, Thank ladies you. and gentlemen, we're going to take our mid-morning break. Don't form any opinions, but any discussion, start your deliberations. All this plan in about 10 minutes. When you're ready, we'll be ready. Thank you. All rise.